Hi guys, it's Sebastian, back with another video for you today, and I've got a special guest with me. It's Ryan from Beach Giza. Do you guys know this brand? How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, Sebastian. It's, uh, it's nice to finally meet you yeah. in person, in yeah. the flesh. I've been I know. watching Sebastian's videos for years, and now here he finally is. Here, it is. here he is. <laughs> so, so we've been attending the World Perfumery Congress, kind of a technical perfumery congress. Uh, mm -hmm. How's it going for you today? Oh, it's just like uh, going fantastic. Yeah. Uh, learning about lots of new raw materials, getting to talk with really established perfumers, learning a lot from them, and uh, and a lot of, you know, kind of cool inside baseball stuff in the perfume industry that's <laughs> <laughs> good to know as an indie perfumer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been very informative and educational for me here. Um, I just got back from Exxon's, went home, and then came back to this, and I'm looking forward to getting back home and relaxing. But uh, today I thought we'd do a quick video with Ryan uh, of Beach Giza discussing two fragrances. Yes. Which Ocean, ones are they? Ocean Water uh, and Cocoa Moon, my two most popular fragrances. Okay, yes. and we're going to discuss uh, the EDP versions and then also EDT versions. So find out about them coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yesterday we're talking about uh, Beach Giza's two fragrances, Ocean Water and Coco Moon. Mm -hmm. So before we do that, how sure. did you get started? Yeah, so uh, it, I was a cinematographer traveling as a cameraman, getting to go to a lot of really interesting places hmm. around the world, uh, you know, India, Southeast Asia. And at that time, I was collecting fragrances. Oh, wow. And so I knew what vetiver was, I knew what sandalwood was, and then we'd go to like, you know, we'd be in Jaipur in the spice markets there, and I'd smell cardamom, oh, and yeah. I'd smell these things. And um, we, were, uh, we were doing a shoot in Bali, Indonesia, and I was in this, we were in this little botanical garden, like just off the beach. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I could swear, like I could smell vetiver grass in there. Wow. I couldn't see where it was, but I was like, I was telling the guys on the crew, I was like, it's in here, I can tell, you know? <laughs> but it, and it was mixing with the sea salt air. Okay. And it's like, we set up this beautiful shot and everything looks really cool. I'm like, this is cool, but how do I capture this? Oh. Like, this is where it's at. I yeah. gotta do this. So it kind of just like, at first it was just like a curiosity that became an obsession. That so it, was, it awakened your senses. Yeah. And Pretty much. It's right. Yeah. And it was just like, it just kind of snowballed into this kind of journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a couple of British friends Okay. And one night we were having probably, we were just having a lot of fun. And we came up with the name Beach Giza. Okay. You know? They're like, yeah, Beach Giza, man. That's okay. you. All right. <laughs> so. That's where the name comes from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so when did you first start la launching uh, fragrances? How, many, how long has it been? Uh, I started kind of, a, I started the soft launch in 2018. Before okay. I'd even formed a company. Oh, you know, okay. Before I had even launched any fragrances or let anybody smell any fragrances, the Instagram community, the FragCom, the FragFam back in 2017 was so just like open and curious to uh, indie perfumers and new perfumers. And I was just getting on Instagram saying that I want to do these beach fragrances. This is what I want to do. And they, they were like, well, when is your stuff going to come out? You know, I mean, you're, you're part of the fragrance community. We want to smell your stuff. So yeah. I was like, okay, so I got to produce something. So after about uh, eight, to eight, eight or 10 months, I had, I've done hundreds of formulations and finally come up with my first fragrance, Juniper Java. Okay. And then shortly behind that was Coco Moon, my most famous, uh, most popular, that, most popular, successful. Selling, yes. Yeah. Selling fragrance. So how come do you make uh, EDTs and EDPs? You know, uh, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was catering to the, the, the fragrance community in the beginning, they okay. like really uh, good value, high concentrated kind of fragrances. Robust you know, stuff. Robust stuff, the stuff that lasts a long time, has mm -hmm. a lot of projection, and they okay. also know they're getting their money's worth because niche fragrances, indie fragrances can be more expensive. Yeah, they are. Um, and, uh, um, and I uh, did that for a few years, and then I started selling um, uh, at the farmers markets okay. and selling more to kind of like the general population. And I was finding that the general population yeah, makes, is, yeah, they're, makes sense. they don't want the big pungent <laughs> loud fragrances. So I, I just did an experiment and I started, um, I started uh, diluting down to EDT, which okay. is around 10% as okay. opposed to 20%, which is what the EDPs are at. Okay. Almost like basically borderline on extrate. 
Uh, and I had a much better response from the general population from something that's lighter, it's it's brighter, it's something that uh, you can you can put on and you're not going to like fumigate the room and <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they liked and okay. so that's been a success for in-person selling. To okay. People. So what uh, what's the price difference between the the fragrances, uh, the ADTs versus the uh, ADPs? Yeah. So the 50 mLs of uh, like ADPs are um, 189.99. Okay. And then the uh, the EDTs are ninety nine ninety nine. Okay. So and it's basically just the pure concentrated kind of like you know ten percent is a hundred dollars, twenty percent is ninety more dollars. Okay. You know because you're getting double in cool. there. Cool. Yeah. Right. So can we smell? Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's do we it. should probably start with the EDT first. Sure. So and then which mm -hmm. one of them is your uh, first? The ocean water. Yeah. Let's do ocean water first. Okay. Yeah. Let's we'll start with that one. And. So ocean water, is that the name and it'll basically be smelling like an ocean water? Yeah, okay. I mean, as soon as you smell it, you're gonna get really aqueous notes right off the top there. There's um, kind of ozonic and mm -hmm. green. Mm -hmm. There's a cucumber note mm -hmm. in there. Okay, that's what I'm getting. That's what kind of gives it the wet, kind of wetness and uh, the greenness. Uh, it's also very menthol-y, kind of uh, aromatic and herbal. Yeah, there's a, a Mediterranean bergamot okay. that's in there too. That also kind of helps bring a little bit more of the brightness to it, okay. and I, it, uh, the, the peel kind of smell of that oh. uh, of that cucumber it kind of blends with that and gives it what you just kind of described. So there's no herb. It's got there's, a very herbal quality to it. Yeah, it kind of does. Mm -hmm. um, there's also some, nice. there's a driftwood accord oh. uh, in the heart of the fragrance, and the kind of that mossiness kind of or that oh, is kind of reaching up moss. too. Okay. Yeah, the oak moss is yeah. reaching up. Um, uh, the um, it's really nice. There's a petrichor note. It's not an official note oh, in there. Okay, there's yeah. petrichor. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a uh, yeah, really it's, cool. It's very earthy. Fresh rain kind of earthy note. Okay. Yeah, fresh water kind of thing. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, it'll yeah. it'll dry down to a, a the woody sea salt mm. with musk and there's natural uh, ethically sourced. Uh, in trace amounts, uh, ambergris, white ambergris. Ambergris, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So this is the EDT version. Mm -hmm. That's quite nice, actually. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you want to do the EDP version of this yeah. now? Yeah, okay. let's do the EDP version. Okay. Let's compare. Yeah. So the EDP, we have the 50 mLs of the EDP. It comes like that. Nice presentation. Yeah, this is nice. I like the whole petrichor kind of earthy greenness. Yeah, it gives it a different kind of twist. It's not like, you know, people sometimes are expecting like Aqua de Jo or like, you know, something or, or on the designer blue kind of fragrances. It's not a blue aquatic fragrance. Okay. It's an earthy, clean, makes you smell like you're just on a very sexy beach. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, see, it's, yeah. They're so different. You know, it's a difference, yeah. There's no notes changes. No. It's just pure, like from 10 to 20 percent dilution. Okay, it makes a big difference. That's yeah. a big part of the art of perfumery: is they're getting the right dilution to kind of communicate the right kind of uh, message in your fragrance to get the this, right kind of transportiveness. This actually smells a lot thicker. You can actually experience mm -hmm. the thickness. This is a lot airier. Mm -hmm. This one also seems a little calmer. The eau de toilette seems like a screamer, like it's louder. Yeah, yeah, it definitely just kind of, I think that, that more of that perfumer's alcohol just like pulls the notes off, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the molecules off, mm -hmm. like just more quickly. Yeah. Yeah, whereas the EDTs are tend to, well, they, they to, yeah, they just hold onto your skin much yeah. longer. So I'm assuming we're gonna get projection with the EDTs, but we're gonna get longevity with the EDPs. Yeah, that's yeah. good, yeah, absolutely. No, finally, this is developing. I, I smell a lot more like it, there's a thickness about it mm -hmm. when we first sprayed it, but it develops mm -hmm. eventually. So mm -hmm. they're both good. They're really, really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily very marine, no. which I like because yeah. I'm not a big fan of marine fragrances. Mm -hmm. I like it more watery and ozonic, and mm -hmm. this has that. Yeah, and focus uh, on the sea salt, and as you said earlier, kind of the, the mossy, the... But it's the petrichor is what I was smelling. Mm -hmm. It has a kind of kind of aromaticness about it, mm -hmm. the greenness about it. Mm -hmm. It's it, quite lovely. Thank you. It, it took me two years to develop the formula mm. uh, because it was I was just going too far into that marine, fishy kind of smell. I mean, I was I was. Thank able, God you didn't. I know. I hate that stuff. I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> me too. And but I wanted to create something that was as you just described. Okay. And it took a while to get there. But people are really surprised when they smell us. They say it really transports 
transports them to Mexico mm. uh, and the vacations that they've had in the past. The thing is, now that I, I'm smelling this, the strength of this is a lot stronger than this one because mm. now that I'm smelling this, mm -hmm. I can't smell this one hardly at you all. You can't smell it, yeah, yeah. Because my nose has gotten really gotten used issue. to the EDP. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. Thank you. And yeah. uh, ocean water, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people in the FragCom will use ocean water to layer with all my other fragrances. Okay. You can layer ocean water with any any other fragrance in the Beach Giza line and be totally safe. With yeah, that yeah, layer. yeah. I, I think yeah. I could see that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you want to move on to Coco Moon? Yeah, let's do Coco uh, Moon. Yeah. Okay. So. So we got a little bit of excitement happening in the background. So, but Coco Moon. Yeah. Just grab a couple more scent strips here. And we'll start with the yeah the EDT. Okay. The summer fragrance that so many people talk about and love and so this is your most popular fragrance. It is. It's it's there's just so many return customers for okay. this fragrance too. People buy it, they they just it's a it's a permanent part of their collection. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a, something that's really consistent in their summertime and springtime rotation and where they need a little beach therapy in the wintertime as okay. well. There you go. So which one is the more popular version, the EDP or the EDT in this? The EDP sells more online, and then the EDT sells more in person at the farmer's markets for general population. Okay, right. yeah. okay so Coco yeah. Moon, where did you come up with the name for it? It was actually uh, a name that me and my partner Carla came up with together, though she'll say she came up with it, and I... Okay. <laughs> uh. So I, I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> Okay, I give it to you. You came up with the name Coco Moon. <laughs> so, what are we smelling here? Because yeah. we're not getting coconut in here, are we? You are, but it's it's uh, gonna it's gonna unveil more. There's really bright notes of pineapple. It's very sharp at the, up top. Yeah, there's there's some really bright notes of pineapple zest. Mm. And again, that Mediterranean bergamot, which just works really well with that pineapple liqueur, it gives it some uh, acidity and okay. some, uh, you know, uh, a little bit more of the brightness. And kind of a florality too, kind of, um, and then the tuber. There's natural tuberose, oh, absolute in there okay. too, and that really shows up getting. early. Yeah, once the zest kind of starts to back off, the fizziness, then that really comes out. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of um, natural benzoin too in the base. So this actually eventually warms up on the on the skin. Absolutely. Because right now it's kind of sharp and metallic for mm -hmm, me, mm -hmm. but I'm assuming it's kind of going to turn into like a more like an ambery experience. Soft and creamy, maybe? Soft, creamy, kind of almost like a, uh, a very expensive European kind of sun cream is what I like to describe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're doing the EDT now. The EDT. That's pretty strong for an EDT. Yeah, all these, you know, the EDTs are at least sometimes a little over the over 10%, very generously concentrated again, okay. bringing value to the fragrant frag comp because some of them also like to wear the EDTs. Okay. And so, and I'm a, I'm a frag head myself, so I like things that are generously <laughs> concentrated. Okay. Cool, yeah. But I understand what you mean by the general public yeah. prefers the EDTs. They prefer it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's check so. out the EDP now. Yeah. The famous EDP, okay. I say famous because, you know, people often ask, like, in the genre of coconut tropical fragrances, does this smell like... You know, okay. VIW. <laughs> oh no, it does not smell like VIW whatsoever. This yeah. is completely different. Yeah, it's not a clone at all. No, 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 uh, no, no. You know, not even a relative. Yeah. No. It, now it's in the same genre. It's the genre. Right? Yeah. You know, you have a barbershop genre. You know, you have fougeres, things like that. I think this is the what would we call this? The tropical beach vacation genre. Yeah. Beachy fragrance genre. Beachy fragrance. But yeah. this is definitely not VIW. No. And those of you that don't know what VIW is, that's Virgin Island water. Yeah, these are not not identical. At least to me, they're not. No, 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 not at all. Yeah. Um, okay. Ooh. Okay, mm. so with the EDP, mm -hmm. instantly it's not as sharp as the EDT. I'm getting more of the base note experience of creaminess right away. To me, 
it's actually a little more beachy in the EDP compared mm -hmm. to the, the the kind of like sharpness with the EDT. But it's quite nice. Thank yeah. you. I really am catching the Himalayan cedar wood that's in mm -hmm. the, um, okay. there's sandalwood and cedar wood in the base of this uh, formulation. And yeah, on the EDP, it always just, like, like you said, it's more kind of bright, zestful in the EDT, but yeah. those woody bass notes just really start to come up in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, I think I like the EDP in this one. Mm -hmm. In the other one, I like the EDT more because mm -hmm. I like that whole projection thing. Yeah. This mm -hmm. one, this has actually, t this particular fragrance actually is pretty big on its own, both EDT and EDP. Mm -hmm. But I like that the EDP has a lot more beachiness about it, and mm -hmm. the zest or the the sharpness that mm -hmm. I'm getting in the EDT uh, is not as uh, strong here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's man. totally different yeah. for a beachy fragrance though, uh, but very very unique. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, I like that. It. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thank you. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, being a self-taught perfumer, I didn't know anything about anything. All I did was collect raw materials and, with a vision of creating, like, the ultimate beach experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that that kind of uh, is where the uniqueness comes from. Okay. Because there isn't any kind of preconceived box that I ever was painted into around it. It has to be this or that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Um, yeah. This was great. Uh, I'd yeah, like yeah. to explore your brand a lot more. Great. Hopefully soon we can do that. Yeah, yeah. Because these are both really nice fragrances. And you can layer these two together, right? Ocean Water and Cocoa Moon? Yeah. A lot of people in the Fragcom love layering Ocean Water and Cocoa Moon. They call it the ultimate a beachy, beachy experience. experience. Yeah, yeah, I'm curious to see that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dig into the Beach Giza house further on the channel. But uh, thank you for watching today. Uh, if you have any questions for me or uh, Ryan, just go ahead and add a comment in the comment section. And I'll have a link to his website as well in the info box. You can go check out his fragrances. But other than that, thanks so much for watching today. Uh, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Thanks, Bye -bye. guys. Can you hold on? This guy's talking. Sure. It smells good for being outside. <laughs> the farmer's market. Right? I, I think I'm preferring the EDT. The EDT? Is that what we smelled when we were at the restaurant? Yeah, I think it might not. Because it jumped out at me a lot more. But maybe uh, because it was we yeah. were in the heat with the EDP, yeah. it smelled stronger. Well, and also just keep in mind that this this has kind of been put through the ringer, this oh. bottle. Yeah, it was okay. a display at the farmer's market, so it's okay. been exposed to different temperatures, light, and all that kind of stuff. Okay.